Hello everybody! In this video, we're going to briefly introduce the archaea, or the third domain of life. So you recall we have the domains eukarya, which include humans, plants, all the other animals, and we have the domain bacteria. The archaea are the third domain of life. I'm sure at some point you've read about organisms that live way down in the deep sea hydrothermal vents. They provide an important well of carbon for those deep sea environments. And a lot of the organisms that live here are archaeons. And in fact, when we look at very extreme habitats all over the earth, we find that many of these extreme habitats are home to archaeons. For a long time, archaeons were thought to be bacteria. But as we developed better analytical techniques and DNA sequencing, we have a number of lines of evidence that they are in fact a different domain and that they're not just strange bacteria. Interestingly enough, they can look like a bacteria in both shape and size, but they can also come in a wider variety of shapes. And I'll show you some of those. They are also prokaryotic cells. So they lack a nucleus, they lack membrane bound organelles, and they also have a circular chromosome similar to bacteria. However, archaeal DNA is packaged in histones, like the eukaryotes, bacteria do not package their DNA in histones. Additionally, many of their replication enzymes for DNA replication are more similar to eukaryotic replication machinery than to bacterial replication machinery. Genetic analysis of archaeal DNA shows that it is pretty unique. It has some things that are like eukarya, but many things that are also like bacteria. So it seems to be an early branching point between bacteria and eukarya. And then one final point of evidence is that the archaea have a unique cell wall structure and a unique plasma membrane structure that are only found in the archaeons. Some archaea look a lot like bacteria in shapes and sizes. In the image on the left, we have two types of archaea, Ignococcus hospitalis and Nanoarchaeum equitans. You can see that both of these are sort of cocci shaped. They're more round, but very different in size. So the nanoarchaeum, there are these small circles here. And you can see that Ignococcus is much, much bigger. In the image on the left, we are looking at Thermophyllum pendens, and it is sort of rod shaped like a bacillus, only it's very, very thin and very, very long. Some archaeons can actually get up to 100 microns in length. Of course, many have unique shapes and sizes. And there's a couple of pictures here. I particularly like this one. You can see that they're actually square. The archaeons themselves make these square and rectangular shapes, kind of more like plant cells, only they are still single-celled organisms. And Sophilobus here is kind of an irregular shape. It can also be pleomorphic, although it does still contain a cell wall. One way I mentioned that archaea are similar to eukarya is that they contain histones. But the histones that they contain are unique to themselves. And the way they package their DNA around the histones is different from eukarya. So eukarya use octamers of histones. So they have eight histones total. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And the DNA wraps around them. 160 nucleotide pairs wraps around that histone. In the image of the archaeal histone, it's just a tetramer. So they only use four, one, two, three, four. And the archaeal DNA wraps around only about once. So 60 nucleotide pair wrap around those histones. So this provides us with some evidence that the archaea were a branch point. That they came before eukarya because they have eukarya-like structures and enzymes, but they are still very similar to the bacteria. Now the cell membranes of archaea are particularly interesting because they are different from both bacteria and eukarya. Bacteria and eukarya have that typical cell membrane that you've learned about before, a lipid bilayer, and each of those lipids is made up of a glycerol 3-phosphate with a fatty acid chain. But the archaea can have a couple of different makeups to their plasma membrane. So they can have a lipid bilayer, but it's structurally different. So instead of a glycerol 3-phosphate, it's a glycerol 1-phosphate. And instead of a fatty acid chain like we have, 
This molecule fentanyl is an isoprenoid. Some archaeons have even stranger cell membranes. Rather than being a lipid bilayer, they can actually be a monolayer plasma membrane. And in this case, we have our glycerol 1 phosphate at each end with a biphytanil in the middle. So we have this hydrophobic region in the middle, and on each end is the hydrophilic head. And we tend to see this monolayer plasma membrane in archaeons that live in very high temperatures because it's very heat stable. In this picture in the upper right, we're looking at an electron micrograph of Ignococcus, and you can see that it has an arrangement similar to gram-negative bacteria. It does have an outer membrane, it does have a plasma membrane that's kind of hard to follow, and a very large periplasm. And in there somewhere is the cell wall. So they can have similar arrangements to gram-positive and gram-negative cells as well. Recall that bacteria have a cell wall composed entirely of peptidoglycan, which is made up of N-acetylglucosamine and N-acetylmuramic acid, or NAG and NAM, and that those NAG and NAM layers are held together through amino acid crosslinks. The structure of the archaeal cell wall, shown on the right, is kind of similar. We do have N-acetylglucosamine, but rather than N-acetylmuramic acid, that has been replaced with N-acetyltalosaminuronic acid. So archaea have altering sugars of NAG and NAT. And like bacteria, amino acid side chains are used to form crosslinks between the layers of NAG and NAT. In bacteria, we call that cell wall structure peptidoglycan. In archaeons, it's called pseudomurine. And like with bacteria, pseudomurine is only found in archaea. One last archaeal structure I want to show you is their flagella. Like bacteria, they can use flagella to move. And like bacteria, these flagella rotate to propel the cell forward. However, they are structurally different from both bacteria and eukarya. On the left, we can see the bacterial flagella, which is very thick as it moves through the cell membranes and the peptidoglycan layer. And the outer tube is hollow filament. In archaea, it is much, much thinner. It's about half as thick as the bacterial flagella. And the portion that projects from the cell is actually solid. It's not a hollow tube. It's like a solid stick coming out of that cell membrane. So organisms in all three domains of life possess flagella and can use it to propel themselves forward. However, among all three domains of life, flagella differ in structure. They also differ some in movement and in the proteins used to build the flagella. The most studied group of archaea are what we call methanogens. These organisms produce the gas methane, which you may know is a combustible gas, shown here by someone lighting some methane on fire. They do this by reducing inorganic carbon from CO2 using hydrogen to create methane gas, which is CH4, and water. And they can do this in a variety of different ways, but we refer to the taking of inorganic carbon and putting it into a carbon form as carbon fixation. All methanogens identified to date live in anaerobic conditions, and a lot of them live in places like the deep mud under salt marshes, where there's a lot of grasses to use up that oxygen content and deprive oxygen from down in the soil. If you've ever gone to a sort of swamp or marshland, you know there's a distinct smell to it, and you can hear people talk about swamp gases being released. That's the methane produced by a variety of methanogens. Okay, quick review time. Archaea are the third domain of life. They do have histones like eukarya, but they are different from eukaryal histones, whereas bacteria don't have histones at all. They come in a variety of shapes and sizes, some similar to bacteria, some similar to eukarya, some completely different. Their plasma membrane is completely different than eukaryal or bacterial plasma membranes. They have those isoprenoids in them rather than fatty acids. Some of them even have a plasma membrane that's a monolayer instead of a bilayer. Their cell wall structure is different and is composed of pseudomurine, where NAT replaces NAM. They do have flagella, but it's structurally different from both bacteria and eukarya. 
And the most studied group of archaea are the methanogens that are able to fix carbon and take it from an inorganic form to an organic form that can be used by other organisms.